Okay, so I'm hoping everybody has already been on the website and has downloaded the template and has had a chance to draw the template up um, on your watercolour or your thick cartridge paper. Hi Samantha! Um, if you haven't drawn it yet, I'm going to waffle for a minute and talk about some basic watercolour um, do's and don'ts and that gives you time to draw draw up your flamingo. So on the on the website there was a download of a template that you could um, you could either draw it freehand if you like or you could cheat and I love to cheat and this is a really cool really really cool way of cheating and you can scribble on the back of that template with a really soft pencil and then you can turn your piece of paper over and push it through onto your cartridge paper or your watercolour paper so um, hello from Cyprus oh my goodness this is exciting hi Joe oh my dad's on there as well hi dad I hope you're I hope you've got your watercolours out dad um, okay so if you haven't drawn up your 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 flamingo make a start drawing it up now and then we'll talk about some watercolour basics and I have some rules okay and this is it's gonna sound really boring but I do have rules and um, the first rule when you do my workshops those of you that have attended any workshops before now will know we go through the rules the first rule in my watercolour workshops is having fun okay so I don't want anyone going oh I can't do it throwing their piece of paper out the window screwing it up saying I can't do it and stropping off this is all about having fun and um, enjoying it and there's no wrong or right way there's no no one's everybody's flamingo is going to look different today because we've all got different paper we've got different pens uh, paints brushes um, and different skill levels and it's all about having fun and throwing some paint around hi Michelle hi Cameron hi Amelia brilliant right um, so that's rule number one rule number one is to have fun and I really hope that's what you're going to do today second rule is all about this lovely stuff here and that's why it's called watercolor it's all about water a lovely clean fresh water and now when I do my classes we have the water police who run around telling everyone off if their water gets too dark and you can't see through it um, so <laughs> I'm not going to police you today but keep your water really lovely and clean because that's what basically what you're putting on the paper hi Louise this is so amazing right so clean water in your jar if your jar gets really really murky like pond water you need to run away clean it bring it back and have some lovely fresh water um, so today's little exercise is going to be really fun and really simple because actually we only need three colors um, so it depends what you've got in your in your kit um, Hen and Charlie hi um, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the um, paints from my tube. So what I've done is I have some pink, some indigo, which is a bit like a blue, and some yellow. But if you've got pans, these are absolutely perfect. Um, we're going we're to try and stick to three colours to keep it really nice and simple. Uh, right, rules. Oh, lost my thread. Rules. Rule one, have fun. Rule two, clean water. Rule three, your beautiful paintbrushes are going to be... What saves you because they are they are your tool and the lovely pointy end on your paintbrush um, is, is basically the is what's going to give you all the nice bits of detail and con and control now if you keep your paintbrush in your water jar for any length of time the end of your paintbrush is just going to get wrecked so one really important thing to do is you can have two jars out of water actually if you want if you if you've got space but but when you clean your water we clean your brush <laughs> sorry <laughs> see if you can um um it's probably the boys are probably on minecraft when they're supposed to be reading mm. um you see what i'm doing rather than looking at this face uh, um we're gonna mix up some pink to start with this area of our flamingo's neck and it's going to be so much about lots of water so if you haven't already taped your watercolor paper to a board or to the desk that is really handy you don't have to but it's really handy because otherwise um the more water you put on here the, the paper might buckle um right so let me see if i can do this i'm going to turn you around again uh -huh. there we go oh look at that
can you see? <laughs> Let me just get that right. Let me just see if you can see. Okay, it's a bit darker than I'd hoped, but I've got the sun poured. I'm hoping you've come back. I'm going to carry on. Are you still there? Okay, let's carry on and hope you're still there. Okay, the first thing we're going to do... Move this out of the way is get some lots of lovely water on the brush and then I want you to fill the whole of your neck of your flamingo with just water just loads and lovely lovely fresh water all the way down the neck now if you've got your photograph to hand that's really useful because you want to be looking at um, where all the light and shade is in a minute so fill the neck loads of water it doesn't matter if you go out the lines we kind of keep this fresh and fun I'm hoping you're all still there because I'm now not looking at the screen. I'm really hoping I'm not just talking to myself, but we'll keep going. Right. So filling that all the way around and that's everywhere you're going to be putting pink. And a bit of a swoosh over there. So then we need to liven up our paint. Let me see if you can see that. Can you see that? There. So we want to liven up the paint that you put in your in your palette or if you've done it in your pans you can liven it up here let me just show you so you need to wake it up and then this is this this is this is the sort of consistency you want it, it, you want enough color but you want the paint to really be able to move so loads and loads of water it's not two different pinks now but that's okay and then what you want to do on your wet working really really fast just drop in some gorgeous pinkness all the way down the side of the neck and keep looking at your photographs and see if you can see where the pinker areas are and where the lighter areas are and if you leave those little white areas of your paper then that will be the, the little white areas of the feathers so keep your paint moving in the water um, dropping a bit more in here and there leaving a little white edge up the top here because that's where the sunlight's caught the top of the bird and keeping it moving There's loads and loads of water so you're not dragging it it's moving with the water that you've already put on the page and, and then what you can do is gradually drop in some slightly darker so it's still the same paint but it's just a little st slightly stronger consistency <coughs> excuse me and then we bring it down and around and that's why we're using a big brush for this because we're not we're not trying to concentrate on the detail now, we're just looking at the form of the flamingo. So we want to keep some light patches over here. And don't worry about going around the edges. Don't worry about going out of the edges, sorry. Right, there we go. So that is effectively what we call a wet on wet technique. Is everybody still there? I really hope you are. Yeah. So, um, so that's a wet and wet technique. Now what we want to do is we want to build up those layers so we can carry on. I'm going to use a bit of pink from this palette and it's a bit of there. So I've got a slightly darker pink now, which you can do or you can just carry on with the same pink. So it's just slight, it's less water and it's going to be a bit stronger. And you're going to look at your photograph and look and see where those darker areas are and just drop the pink in. And you see, you see where it just flows in the water like that and you get all those lovely little effects which is exactly what we want to replicate in the natural in the natural world nothing is perfect it's all little fluffy little feathery edges so bringing it around the eye leaving the white area leaving the white area here bring it round a little bit more paint a bit round here so we're not going to touch any of this area here because i think that's already creating some nice form a little bit here but i think we might bring some round here and what you can start doing with the pointy bit of your brush is you can start flicking out some little feathery areas just to give it a little bit more life. Right, so that's where he's got his beak all tucked in there. Look, that's quite nice. We went round. Oh, the dogs joined me. This could be interesting. Hello, Evie. And that was the door, not the dog. Okay, so what we're going to do 
going to leave that. Oh, you can catch that bit. So you can get some tissue. If you if you get an area where it's blobbed, can you see where I've blobbed here? And it's, I'm worried it's going to run. This is why I said get tish, have tissue to hand. Not because I want any tears, because this is all about fun, but because I want you to be able to mop up any mistakes. So just there, I've put too much water on, so you can mop it up. And again, if you've done the same, if you think you've gone too dark in a certain area, just get your tissue out and do the little mop, because actually the tissue makes a really cool effect as well, which can look a bit feathery. So yeah, actually, I probably should have left a bit more white there. Da, da, da. It's very much trial and error with watercolour, and it's very much just letting the paint do its thing and enjoying it. Um, right, so I'm going to let that dry. So that's the wet and wet for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, mix up some yellow. So if you've, if you've got yellow already out in your palette, that's great. If you've got some in your pans, choose a nice bright zingy yellow. And again, we want the same amount of, I'm not going to do water first with this one because I want a bit more control, but about the same amount of consistency of the yellow paint as we did with the pink. And then just, just drop your yellow in into those areas there. Now what I want you to do, and this is where it, it's, you've got to work quite quickly. Oh, don't forget that's like a hole in his beak there, isn't it? So what we want you to do, while that's still wet, Go and grab some of your darker colour. Now I've got a really indigo, which is a bit like a blue, because I don't really want to paint with black. And black deadens the painting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the indigo. I'm going to grab, clean your brush so you don't contaminate your, your colour. Grab a little bit of pink, a little bit more of the indigo, just so I've got sort of a, a dark bluey colour. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in, but look at this, I'm hoping this works. But if you, it's gone too, it's gone too far. If you bring the blue in, I've got it's gone too far, but it's fine, it's fine. And I'm just going to control that with my brush because that's too much of a bleed. But what I was trying to do is get like a really natural bleed. I'll show you again. Hang on. So you get that just joining in rather than having a harsh line. Let's see if we can get it back. There we go. It's gone a bit dirty, but it doesn't matter. So we're just joining it in so we get a nice little fluffy edge, not a hard line between that darker colour of the beak and the yellow. We can just drop it in like that. How's everyone doing? Oh, my sister's watching. Oh, hi Maria, Maria's watching. I have to lean up, look at, look at, my, um, look at my phone now. I'm probably gonna make it jump around. Oh, sorry. Oh, Jemima's there watching Teletubbies. Oh, Jemima, why are you watching Teletubbies, not watching me? That's my niece. <laughs> right, so there we go. So we've got some little dark areas around there. Um, again, I've looked, it's gone a bit crazy. So just get your tissue, just dab it round, and you can always fill that yellow in later when it's dry. So now, if you want to speed it up, because it's quite warm in here, mine's mine's um, dried quite quickly, quickly actually. But you can always use a hair dryer, or um, there's an embossing heat tool that you can buy, which I don't have. Maybe I'll put it on my birthday list, but um, you can, and then you can hair dryer it ready for the next, ready for the next wash. So we've already done some wet on wet techniques. These, this is wet on wet and gradients there. And then what you've done here was wet on wet. But we can see what's happened as it's dried. This area here isn't quite as dark as I'd like it to be when you look at the photograph. So what I'm going to do now, I think we're dry enough, not quite, but we're going to, for the purposes of not hanging around too long. I'm going to add a tiny bit of my blue to my pink, just so it's a slightly darker pink this time. And then I'm going to drop in. Oh, it's still a bit wet and wet, but that's okay. So I'm going to drop in some slightly darker pink just to get that lovely little bend in his neck. There we go. So I sound out of breath, don't I? And then I think what I'm going to do, because I'm trying to stick to just the three colours, just to keep it simple. So if you mix up, um, it's kind of a ready area, this bit around his beak, but I'm going to do it a dark purpley pink, because it's my painting and there's no rules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this little area here, I'm trying to keep a crisper line if you can, but it's still a bit wet, my painting. And bringing it round. And then any areas, because we don't use white in watercolour, we are um we the pa the white is the white of the paper 
So any little white areas, you need to leave gaps. Now you might want to use your smaller brush now when you're getting into a bit more detail. You don't have to keep up with me. It doesn't matter where you are. This Hopefully this video will save so you can watch it back again. And I'm hoping that it's all filming okay. Right, okay, so um, we're going to add some purple. We're going to just go up to the eye like that. And keeping a few little lighter areas, just to add a bit more tonal light and shade and bring it round to the your beak. And then I'm going to use, I quite like that colour actually. It's not realistic, but I quite like it. And I'm going to use some of that to bring in this line just to define that area of his beak. And again, there's a little bit more there in that where the hole is. I'm going to drag it around. And I'm going to outline this little bit here just where it tucks in. How are you all doing? Oh, it's very dark. Someone says it's very dark. Oh dear, let me see if I can turn some more lights on. Hang on a second. Let me open the blind. That's not any better, is it? I'm going to, I can't. Why is it so dark? If I can move it along. Aha! Look at that patch of sunshine. I didn't plan this time of day, did I? Okay. Bear with. I've got some shadow now. Oh. Right, when I do when I do another one of these, if <laughs> if you even want me to, um, I will try and get the lighting sorted. I think I'm gonna have to go back to that area, sorry. Okay, how are you all getting on? Are we still there? Okay, so what we really, really like to do now is look at the, getting some more fluffiness in these pink feathers. So really I should be letting this dry a bit more, so I'm just gonna see how this is gonna work on this paper. Depending on the quality of your paper as to how much of a wash you can put on, um, the more expensive thicker papers will allow you to keep going and keep going um, but sometimes you end up taking off the surface of the paper but we are just going to have fun with this so I'm going to bring some darker bits of pink round keeping lots of water still moving so you can get all those little natural natural brush strokes that represent the feathers keep it moving let's get that a bit more natural around there And I'm going to start dropping in some little more feathery suggestions around here. The dog's going to bark any minute now. I'm hoping one of my children might be watching and they might come and take the dog away. Anybody? Okay, and then a bit more pink. I'll just go a bit darker up and around the eye. You can keep going and adding more and more detail or you can keep it really loose and free. Now I really like fresh, loose, because it, it just, it's got some life to it. Oh look, here we go, child coming to remove dog. Well done, Jack. That means you're watching. Yeah. Oh, well done. Are you actually doing it? No, oh. Doing it. oh, thanks, okay. No offense, none taken. So then we're gonna, let's have a go at this eye now. now I think I've famously said it's all about the eyes, all about the eyes, but it's so, so much with animals. It really is all about the eyes and <laughs> just creating that little bit of personality and expression. Now, if you've gone really, really close to your eye and you've got some big washy areas, you really ought to try and dry it off um, or wait till it's dry because otherwise, if you, get, if you get this wrong and the eye bleeds into your pink, it's gonna be a bit of a mess to clean up, but it's all right, it's not the end of the world. Um, so I've mixed up some of my darker indigo and I'm going to use a smaller brush and then with a lot less water so it's a much thicker consist consistency so you've got a lot more control it's going to do the outline of the eye just bringing it round and looking at where you can keep some highlights so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to take all the paint off my brush so there's nothing left and I'm going to dry it on the tissue and then I'm going to use the paint that I've already got on the page and just paint in 
and make sure I leave some white space because that's what's going to give him that little twinkle in his eye keep him looking lively there we go so oh look now we've got a flamingo it's actually come to life and I'm going to bring some of these darker darker lines Ooh. down and around right now I'm going to leave that for a minute and consider I'm going to go over here and see if I can see any of your messages appearing on my screen um, oh hi Catherine hi from Guy and Charlie I hope this is working for everyone let me just see if I can scroll down Right, any questions? How's everyone doing? Is anyone free to type and ask me any questions? Oh, we've got some comments on here. Let me have a look. Oh, hello. Hello, Tate. <laughs> Lily and Dad are trying. Excellent. Can't wait to see your results. So what I'm really hoping is that at the end of this, you might be brave enough to take a quick picture and share it with me because I really, really would love to see what you're, what you're producing. It would be really cool. Um, right, I'm just going to see how this is drying. It's still quite wet, actually. Carried away. Okay, so when, once you've dried this area, so I would, I, I would probably hair dry it or just walk away, make a cup of tea, come back. That's when you want to um, start to add in a few more little feathery shapes. Now mine's still probably a bit wet, but I can just start adding. In. And if you look at your photographic reference and you look and you've, what, I, what I tend to do is, is half squint at your picture. So while you half squint, you can really then pick out the form and the light and dark. So where it's light at the top and where it's dark at the bottom, and that's what makes it a solid 3D object. So what we're looking at now is just making that a little bit more 3D, dropping in a few darker, feathers around, around here in a bit more detail, and then we're going to have some fun. I mean, even more fun than you've already had, obviously. Um, so we're just going to drop in, you can use your small brush or your big brush, dropping it round, a few more bits on the head. I still think this area isn't dark enough, but I think that's because it was too wet when I added it in. Let's go. There's a few more little feathery areas here. You can keep going and keep going until it's a really highly detailed illustration, but um it's absolutely up for you up to you and it's all about having fun and really enjoying it and not stressing so what i would tend what i would we're look at, looking at this now i think there probably needs to be a bit more darkness just underneath here and i'm going to bring this color around a bit darker here And you can remove all the paint from your brush, wipe on a tissue, and then just blend in that little area you've done. Right, I don't, I don't know what stage you're all at. I'm really hoping it's working. And if anyone's still there, well, well done for hanging on. But this is the fun bit. I really hope you haven't missed this bit. So once you've finished and you're completely happy, um, this is the bit that, that I think brings painting alive. Now, you can use the blue, you can use the pink, you can use the yellow. Um, and all I would ask you to do is... Um, let the person who's working next to you know, cover up any soft furnishings or anything you're precious about before you go crazy. So using your big brush, clean water, and I'm going to use pink because obviously it's flamingo and you want a lovely sort of, let me see if you can see that, lovely loose solution of paint. And then we're just going to get the paintbrush and you can use an old toothbrush or whatever you like, but this is the way I like to do it. So paintbrush and then you drop your finger down and flick and flick and flick, flick and flick. And this is the best bit. And it means you're nearly done. And actually, oh, a little bit of blue might work. Let me just see, it might be a bit dark, but yeah. Oh yeah, a little bit of blue as well. And flick, flick, flick. And then the trick is to know when you're finished to know not to overwork it and to walk away and walk away from your painting and um, and hopefully you'll be really pleased with it. So <laughs> I'm interested to know how this has worked. 
Um, I think I might see if I can get a better filming set up so that I can actually see your comments at the same time and sort out my lighting. But um, if you've enjoyed it, let me know and I will get another template drawn up and we can meet again. Oh, I don't know, maybe at the end of the week. Um, stay safe, everybody. Try and enjoy this quiet, um, creative time. Um, and we're all in the same boat. Um, thank you for joining. It's been great fun.